Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, we'll be making butterflies or little bow ties much like this using the CNC. Now, these little butterflies or bow ties, and I'm gonna use them interchangeably throughout the video, they are perfect for preventing the spread of a crack in the wood much like this. So, you find out the direction of the crack, you do some magic, and somehow the little butterfly gets placed in a perpendicular direction, and that way the little conical shape of the butterfly forms a mechanical bond with the wood, and that prevents it from further splitting apart. In the olden days, you first create the butterfly, you place it on top of your crack, wherever you want to place it, you trace it out with a piece of pencil, and then you cut out that intersection, hoping not to go over that pencil line, otherwise you're gonna get a big gap. Now that I have a CNC machine, let's see how it's done. Starting with a fresh Inkscape file, and by the way, make sure you upgrade to the latest version of Inkscape. One of the modules we're gonna be using was crashing my previous version of Inkscape, but since the upgrade, everything works correctly. So back to Inkscape, uh, there's gonna be one thing that we need to do as far as a setup. If you're upgraded to the latest version, the button up here is defining your uh, um, snapping, your snapping abilities, and make sure all those are checked on. And you'll find out later on in the video. Once that is done, let's create a basic butterfly shape. So we're gonna create a rectangle and I am going to make sure that this rectangle has some sort of dimensions that I like and since I am a golden ratio person, of course I'm going to make it into the golden ratio. So, uh, maybe a little bit more than we thought, 40,000.618. There we are, that's what we are looking for. Uh, so the way I do the butterfly is I draw my guides Uh, one for each side of the rectangle and I'm just going to make sure that I blow it up so that we can all see and one here for roughly the center and if you have enabled every single snapping option right here it will snap to the center so then what I do is I move my uh, vertical guides uh, 12 millimeters and that's just because of how big my shape is if it was bigger I'm gonna move them more if it was smaller I'm gonna move them move them a smaller amount but that's how I roughly do it and I do the same thing for the other one as well next what we need to do is convert that rectangle to a path and the easiest way is path you select the object first path and object to path. Next is we click on the node tool and we double click right here on the intersection of the guide with the, uh, the guide with the sides of the rectangle. Uh, so we double click and that way it creates that extra node. And what we do next is we take the node and you bring it down to the intersections between the guides. And this is our basic butterfly shape. Now let's take this shape, run the G-code and see what we have and where the pitfalls are going to be. Taking a closer look, we can see that the inner corners right here are quite sharp and angular, but the outside corner is very rounded. Similar in the cases right here, in the middle, the outside corner is mostly angular, but the inside corner is mostly rounded. If you watched my previous videos on using the CNC, you will know that the path that we create right here 
is where the center of the cutting tool bit would be. So with the 3.175 millimeter tool, it will look something along those lines. Uh, let's uh, select the shape right here. So we, we see that the X, that's the center. And when it runs along the path, this is what we'll get. And when it reaches the corner, uh, the round shape of the tool basically creates that round shape that we saw earlier on. And it's the same thing with those corners that we see right here. So we're not surprised at what we're seeing on the CNC uh, sample piece that we have. Now, in order for the butterflies to be fully effective, your butterfly, along with the shape that's in the wood right here, must be of the exact same shape and size. And now we are going to go into the concept of inner and outer path. So I'm going to be using this piece of wire to demonstrate the concept and that has the same diameter as our tool head. So in order to cut out the butterfly from the piece of wood that we want, we know that the tool head must go outside to cut it out into that particular shape. Similarly, the receiving piece, i.e. the piece that we're going to cut into the wood, to cut out the shape, the two, the two must go on the inside of that particular uh, shape in order to get it to the exact same size as our desired shape. So, as a summary, if you want to get this particular shape, our tool head must go outside and cut outside of the desired shape. But when we want to recess it into the actual wood, we need to go on the inside of the desired path so that we get the exact same shape. And now let's also translate this into our vector graphic. So when we translate this visually to our graphic design, uh, to Inkscape, so to get to the desired shape for the butterfly itself, our tool head needs to cut on the outside. And to get it recessed into the wood, the tool must go on the inside in order to get to our desired path shape. So, how to do this? Well, there is a very easy way in Inkscape to create this inner and outer path. And let me show how to do it. So first of all, we duplicate our path because we want to compare it to what we have later on. And then, in the stroke style, we go in and we enter the diameter of the tool plus maybe a little bit more. Now, what this a little bit more is, um, it's somewhat unknown, but I found out slightly over the diameter of the tool is giving me the best results in terms of fitness of one piece into the other. Uh, I have used 3.3 and uh, that gives me the best results so far. Now you can experiment with 3.4, 3.1, 3.2 and you see how it goes along but basically it is the same steps that we see right here. So we see that our stroke or our outline suddenly has increased and Inkscape has this beautiful functionality called stroke to path and in the case of a very thick path that we see right here it creates two paths one for the outside and one for the inside and to prove that we're going to click on the path tool or the node tool and we see markers on the outside right here and also on the inside. That's all good but they're all joined together. What we do next is try to break them apart and there is a great function on the path menu that goes along and says break apart. Obviously that creates two separate objects and now we have to go into each object and perform some operations. Uh, operation number one is get rid of the fill. I am going to put a stroke color of uh, red just so that we can distinguish it 
from uh, from the rest and I'm just going to decrease the stroke to again 0.1 millimeter so that we can all see uh, or was it 0.0, yeah, 0.1 millimeter that way it is not very thick it kind of is uh, comparable to the other dimension that we have and we do the same thing for the inner uh, shape that we have no fill the stroke in this case we are going to color it blue just to have that distinguishment between our desired shape versus our paths that the tool needs to take to get to the desired shape and let me uh, do zero and make it blue and also give it 0.1 millimeter of thickness so there so now we have two two paths one inner one outside uh, one outer and that way when the tool runs it's going to give us that shape and we can simulate the tool running so when the tool runs along the blue path or the inner path or the path for recessing it into the wood we can see that it goes along and then it is under our desired shape that we see right here and when the tool runs along the red path which is going to be the path cutting out the actual butterfly that will go in to the recess in the wood we can see that it also cuts right outside of our shape, our desired shape. But we're not done yet. That's because we have a little bit of problem with angles. So once we saw right here, once we reach the, uh, the edge right here, the tool is just going to move into the other direction. And that leaves this corner right here rounded. Now, obviously, there is always two ways to do it. One is after you're done with the CNC, you can take a chisel and chisel it out. Number two, which is what I'm going to be doing right now, is round our desired path this time. So, I mean, <laughs> we have to round it. Uh, the way to do it is very simple. Now, I've used 3.3 uh, as my quote desired width of the tool so I'm gonna make a radius similar to that uh, so I'm gonna increase my tool size to 3.3 and 3.3 and make sure that it is sitting right at the, the node the edge and I'm going to uh, uh, magnify it so we stick our shape and we put it right on the cusp node so in order to, to round our desired shape what we'll do is we select it and there is a very good functionality called um, path effects so we click on it and that opens up this little um, window right here we click click on the plus sign and we use the corner uh, fillet or chamfer also I kind of uh, <laughs> favorited it so that it's easier for me to find and once we click on it we can basically set the rounding of every edge on the path at the same time and let's do millimeters Oh, and by the way, there is two ways to do it. One is using the millimeters right here, but I can't figure out how to set the radius because if I use, let's say, 3.3 uh, divided by 2 is 1.65, and I make it round, obviously it doesn't go right to where the edge is. So you can play around with this number or you can grab one of the green dots right here and basically pull it and then you can see that little uh, blue marker is going to be where the path is and there once we get it close to where we want it we leave it and basically that's our rounded shape 
and we can always go to the other side so that we can double check the next corner that it's also rounded the same way well actually it isn't and that's because we use the handle to round only one particular corner if we go back and do the path effect with modifying the radius and I think in my experiments it was something along the lines of 2.35 if we do that uh, we get it quite close so let's do 2.4 uh, even better so if we do that if we use the uh, functionality right here then that way all our corners are done at exactly the same time now at the same time though it also rounded this corner right here with the exact same radius and if we put the tool let's say the tool is running on the outside path so we can see that keeping it this way our desired shape is uh, is not compatible with uh, anything so one way to do it is to round this corner based on the the tool itself and when we round one or two corners by themselves we use the green marks and again that little blue faint blue line that we see is basically going to change the shape of our curve right here so now when the tool runs along our outside path and reaches this corner well that's going to leave the exact same shape as we are, as the tool and now we have to do the same for the other side because the green dots only do one corner at a time now obviously option two is to round off the red line but i think it's a lot more difficult uh, especially to emulate the shape right here so it's just easier to modify your desired tool path as opposed to uh, desire the outside path so anyways so we're gonna do the outside we take the green mark and usually once you touch once you intersect the your desired two path or the green dot of the desired two path with your two head that's kind of like the shape that we are looking for and if you keep mag magnifying you're gonna get even more precise um, measurements there we are So basically what we did is rounded off our desired shape into what we see right here and that is mainly to accommodate the diameter of the tool and how it is going to run along the path. Uh, so once again on the inner path when it reaches the corners it creates that round shape right here and the same thing the sharp corner on the outside we wanted to create a nice uh, oval that is going to coincide with the diameter of the tool so what we're doing right now is delete the inner and outer path which we used for the rounding purposes and we're going to use the rounded desired path and create an inner and an outer path based on that new rounded path uh, and again, we already know how it, it, it is going. We are going to delete the existing line so we don't get confused. We are going to duplicate this particular path. And we are going to go into our uh, fill and stroke. And for stroke, we are going to be using 3.3. That's going to give us our very thick path. And we are going to do path stroke to path and path break apart and then we're going to use the same uh, coloring scheme as we did before with no fill a stroke color of red so that we can distinguish it from the other ones and we're going to give it a 0.1 millimeter of uh, width so we can all see it clearly and we do the same thing with the inner shape where we're going to give it a no fill a stroke paint of blue color
and a stroke style of 0.1 millimeters. So let's magnify and simulate the two running along the path. So we're going along the red path and we see that it's uh, going along our desired path. It reaches the corner here. It has a nice uh, beautiful curve and then goes along down the path and it is going right along where you want it to be and the same thing for the inside of the, of the inner tool path we're gonna go and we are going right where we want to be with the tool path now let's inspect the other sharp corners along the edges so when the tool path goes on the inner path the blue line goes right here to the edge and makes a nice and perfect uh, perfect stop and perfect round corner right here so let's go and see how it goes on the outside running along the path running along the path but i think if we zoom really closely this is kind of going way too much into the path itself so i mean we can see right here it is more towards the outside and i think the easiest way to do it is if i actually uh, make that path a lot smaller in size so now our desired path is very thin line and we can see how the tool is going to go over it so we can see running running and right here you see it's cutting in to our line it's not going on the right on the outside of the line but it's uh, a little bit inwards so that is not going to make our desired shape for the actual butterfly and in this case uh, the simplest thing to do is uh, click on the outside path and manually uh, adjust each corner uh, so that is taking the node and slightly moving it towards the outside. And we can see that our new path right here is right on the outside edge. As opposed to what it was before. And we do that for all four corners. So it's always a good idea to get your fake tool and run it along the path to see how it runs so i've done all the other corners and now everything looks okay and what i'm going to be doing now is uh, taking the outer path and putting it in its own file and taking the inner path and putting it into its own file as well that's because they're going to be run on two different pieces of wood now for demonstration purposes i am going to be using this piece of scrap wood to do both at the same time obviously side by side and then I'm going to take the butterfly that go that's going to get cut out and see if that's going to fit uh, the cut out that the inner path created. So I have created the two paths in the Luban software. Uh, there is the outer path that is going to give us our butterfly. And there is the inner path that is going to give us our shape that we're going to cut into the wood itself. Uh, for both, I use the exact same settings, the flat end mill with a target depth of four millimeters. I know it might be a little bit over, but this is three point something. So this is going to four millimeters of cutting depth is going to make sure that uh, uh, everything gets cut away and I can move it from one place to another. Uh, now, when you're doing it in real life, probably your piece of wood that you're going to be using for the butterfly will be a lot thicker, so you need to adjust for that. And one tip, or actually two tips that I'm going to say is, if you're doing it in real life, in real production, uh, make sure you don't cut away all through the wood. Uh, that's because sometimes there is tension in the wood and the butterfly may spring one way or another whenever the two cuts through the wood itself and that may affect the shape and the second tool is make sure that everything is clamped nice and tight and has a nice flat surface right where the tool cuts uh, because again with the, a little bow shape uh, the tool is going to cut a little bit more 
and that's gonna give us a little bit of deflection. I learned that the hard way, so that's why I'm giving you this tip so you don't do it yourself. Uh, so I am ready to run the G-code and let's get into uh, the CNC. So it's time to see how the butterfly that we just cut fits in. Okay, and there it is. You just have to press a little bit. So, I mean, there are minor gaps, very minor, but as you saw, I had problems fitting it in. So there is a nice tight fit. And those minor gaps that we see are going to get filled with glue once you glue it in, in place. So as a summary, the only difficult thing about creating a path in, uh, in any software is accounting for the diameter of your tool. And that's why with Inkscape we created the inner and outer path. We adjusted our desired shape to accommodate for that tool path diameter. And then we redid the inner and outer path once again after those adjustments have been made. So uh, we're not going to be spending a lot of time trying to finagle with the corners uh, and we're going to get the software to do that for us. Now the question is, can you do a STL file? And I say, of course there is, but I didn't have time to research it. So maybe in the future, when I have more time, I can actually focus on an STL to do the exact same thing. Uh, but for right now, we're going to be doing Inkscape and maybe in the future we'll try an STL. So as we can see, the path created a pretty good butterfly as well as an inset for where the butterfly is going to fit inside the wood. Now it's time for me to create an appropriately sized butterfly for this particular crack and I might use one or two, I'll have to think about it. Uh, glue them and create a nice pen display. If you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe and also hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video releases. Also, follow me on all social media channels and consider supporting me on Patreon. All the links are down in the description.